Hello everyone, my name is Ida Endio. I bet most of you would now tell me your name and something about yourself. Maybe you are pianists or tennis players, artists or you're crazy about video games. This can partly define you because that's what you love. And I am type 1 diabetic. Does this define me? No, because I did not choose it. My everyday life is a few blood sugar checks, insulin shots, counting food I eat, and getting prepared for any circumstances that could happen anytime. I've been giving myself injections since the age of nine. Until then, I was just like almost any other healthy kid. The one day came when I started to sleep much during the day and drink a lot of liquids. And by a lot, I mean several liters per day. Most of these were sugary drinks. I went to the doctor with my parents. They checked my blood sugar. And this is when an error occurred. It was so high that it was out of scale and couldn't be measured with the tools they had there. We were rushed to the hospital with little me crying all the way there because I was so scared. Then I had my blood sugar checked for the second time. 604 milligrams per deciliter. This is what appeared on this little screen. And this was my blood sugar level. And let me tell you as a fun fact that a healthy person's blood sugar level ends at 99. I stayed in a hospital for, for a week, learning how to treat my disease. So the main goal is to always keep your sugar level as if you were a healthy person. So sometimes it's too high, that's when insulin is required. And sometimes, as many people may not know, it's too low. That's when I have, my body needs an additional dose of glucose. When I got back from hospital, my younger brother found out about these insulin shots. He looked at me and said, but aren't you terrified of needles? That was true. I am to this day. But do I have a better choice? So other people's reactions to my diabetes are often quite funny and similar. Uh, most of them go like, oh my God, you're diabetic. You, it must be so hard for you. I'm sure I could never do that. Thank you. But I'm sure you can. If you didn't, you would die. So for me, that's pretty motivating. But there was a time when I was younger and many people, especially my age, told me that they wanted to be diabetic like I am because they saw parts of my life when you could say it's convenient to be ill. And they said it in situations like when I could eat or leave during classes or I didn't have to participate in PE lessons or any other unpleasant activities. And when I heard it as a child, I was very hurt every time because I thought, how could someone be jealous of one of the worst things that happened to me? And to this day, some people are really sarcastic when it comes to my condition. They doubt it or they say it's just an excuse not to do something. And let's take, for an example, an older lady in a bus standing over me, arguing that I should give my place to her. So I said, I can't. I'm, I'm ill. I can't stand up. I can't feel my legs as it's a symptom of a very low sugar level. And what I heard was something like, Nowadays, every teenager is ill, everyone is, has an issue, and you just can't behave yourself. But I have to take care of myself, so I'm sorry. Uh, and there is this third group, group of people, people who are really over-caring, and they don't have really special knowledge about diabetes. So I get questions like, are you sure you feel well? Or can you eat that every five minutes? So I often say, no, I can, then I eat, because you can trust me with that. And also, I don't need any special diet. And many people are very surprised when they hear it. And the reason is because people are used to mistaking type 1 diabetes with type 2. And also, answering your other question, yes, I can eat sugar. All I need is control. And this control, has been present in my life since the day of diagnosis. And at the very beginning of my life with diabetes as a child, I used to cry like a few times a week because I couldn't be like any other kid. I couldn't always eat whenever I wanted. I had to inject myself. I had to 
check my blood sugar. I had to carry these respons responsibilities with me everywhere I went. I have to this day. There was a time in my life when I used to skip events because it would take all the fun away. But with time, slowly and step by step, I learned how to make diabetes my standard fare and my life training. I started to treat it like something else than my enemy. And diabetes was, and to this day is, a challenge, a challenge that I accepted, and honestly, I just got used to it. When I was hospitalized, the doctor told me and my parents that people are only given problems they can handle. So I thought, I am strong enough, I can handle this. And I did. And what's more, at the same time, in a hospital room next to mine, there were two teenage girls. And the reason for their stay was because they neglect their diabetes. And many teenagers do that as some kind of rebellion or because of the tiredness from the diabetes. And I understand that. But I decided that I will not ever end up like this. And today I feel like this whole situation, which I struggle with, taught me a lot, taught a lot of people around me. It partly shaped my character. And I'm not telling you that it's good to be diabetic because it's awful, but it gave me some opportunities. And I know that I am much more than my disease and I am capable of things like everyone else. Thank you.